Hello there everybody, I'm Paul and welcome to Photograph This. This is the uh, very first installment of our program series here on YouTube and what I'm going to discuss with you is photography obviously. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about me. I've been uh, doing photography for about 15 years and maybe a little bit more than that and I'm also a television camera operator so I'm pretty well proficient in uh, the photography aspect and today we are going to cover the uh, basic photography and what the different types of photography are because there are different types of photography. Uh, there's three different types actually and incidentally they all start with the letter C. There's communication photography, creative photography and commercial photography and they're all very different and what I'm going to do is explain to you the differences by using a subject and in this case we'll use this pepper shaker and why I want to use this is this is our subject and with this pepper shaker we're going to describe the three different types of photography which I mentioned are very different and most photographers are not proficient in all three types of photography for example I'm a communications photographer so let's go over what the different types are now I mentioned communications photography and basically that is news, sports, special events uh, that sort of thing and you would just say, for example, you're trying to tell something to somebody through photography. So we'll use this pepper shaker, as I mentioned, and let's say, for example, here's the pepper shaker, and oh no, the pepper shaker has tipped over. I need to tell somebody about that. That's communications photography. With that, you're just going to simply photograph this as it is, usually using ambient lighting, because you don't have any other lighting, and you just center up the subject. Very straightforward. Like I said, no special lighting, no, speci no special anything, just center the subject and get the best photograph you can. That is communications photography, that's what I specialize in. The other type, another type is the creative photography, and that's a little bit more fun, and I do do a little bit of that also. Uh, that is more of an art, which is, for example, again, using the pepper shaker. Let's say, for example, you have the pepper shaker and you're going to photograph it at an odd angle like for example here from down here or up here you're going to have a light coming from the back instead of from the front or you're going to have a green light and a red light you know all kinds of weird stuff slightly out of focus all kinds of weird stuff like that because it's art I mean who cares it doesn't have to look good it's not about looking good it's about being artsy fartsy and you know it's it's, it's up to the person looking at the photograph to decide why you did what you did. You know, oh, why is there a green light here and no light here and why is it upside down? Who cares? That's creative photography. That's kind of fun. We will cover a little bit of that also. And the third type is commercial photography. I personally don't like it. I was never good at that. And commercial photography is really not for fun. Uh, there are some good commercial photographers and you can make pretty good money at it if you like doing that. But basically, Again, using this pepper shaker, commercial photography would be, I'm selling this. So, you know, I'm going to put this on a nice white, you know, surface, nice white backs, you know, nice white backstop, centered, perfect, perfect lighting, light meter, no shadows, no hot spots, all that kind of things, 20 minutes, 15 minutes to set it up and photograph it. And then it's going to go into a catalog or an advertisement or something like that. And I know a little bit about that, though I haven't done it and I'm not good at it. I do know people who do commercial photography. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of a little department store chain called Walmart, but you might have heard of them. Uh, I know some of the people who do photography for Walmart uh, catalogs and, and their ads. So, you know, we're going to cover a little bit of that too, and of course, video. We'll touch on video a little bit. Uh, so, basically, that's your three different types, and through the series, we'll touch on each one. In each, you know, each episode and, and discuss each one, uh, you know, how, uh, how it, each type of photography affects on your subject and how you're going to shoot each subject. Uh, focusing more on, of course, the communication photography because that's what I do. Before we go today, I do want to touch on one more thing. Um, we're gonna, we are going to touch a little bit on lighting as well. And uh, what I want to mention to you is one of the uh, important things is when you're first starting in photography, uh, use the automatic settings of the camera. Now, once you get used to using the automatic settings, you can go and play and use manual settings. Uh, for me, I don't like the automatic because I don't have any control. So, you know, get used to it. Try, you know, you can change the settings yourself, manual settings, a little bit later on. Start out using um, automatic. 
especially white balance. I want to touch on white balance. Now, white balance is complicated to understand what it is and, 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 and what it means and how it's important in photography and video. You don't have to go into that much detail, but uh, what you do need to know is use the automatic white balance on the camera as part of your automatic settings. It doesn't always work because just like everything automatic, it doesn't work the way it's supposed to, but later on we'll touch on white balance more and how to use it automatic. Basically what it is, there's no such thing as white light really, um, except for probably outside in sunny weather at around noon time, that's the closest to white as you're going to get. As the sun starts to you know, begin to rise or sets, the color changes, it's actually more orange. Uh, or more blue, depending on artificial lighting again, it's, it's different, actually different color and the camera doesn't know the difference. Our eyes and brain adjust to white balance automatically, cameras don't. And you can, might actually see that if your white balance is wrong, you might have a little bit of orange or blue tinge to your photo, that's a white balance problem. Unfortunately, you can't correct that in editing, so you have to make sure it's right. That's why use the automatic white balance when you first start out. Um, just go over a couple of things about white balance. Um, the best white balance, as I said, uh, or actually best lighting for white balance is natural light. I try my best not to use artificial lighting. Even here, I'm in front of a window. I'm using light coming from the window because it's the best white balance and best overall lighting. If you can't, uh, you can use artificial lighting. Uh, well, you have to, but uh, you know the different types of artificial lighting. Basically, to go over it quickly with you. Any light that has a filament in it, we call that in photography tungsten lighting. That basically has an orangey kind of tint to it. Uh, fluorescent lighting, of course there are different ones. I don't know if you're a, how to buy fluorescent too, but you'll notice there's different color temperatures now. And uh, you know, there's some that give off an orange, some give off actually purple light, some are blue. And again, that's important in photography. You have to know what color temperature light you're using. Uh, mercury vapor is blue. Sodium vapor lights obviously are orange, uh, they're, they're the worst type of light for photography, so try to stay away from those. Uh, there are some lights, uh, HMI lights, which we'll touch on a little bit, but they're more for professional. They're very, very close to daylight, uh, the true sunlight color temperature. And there's also a new type I want to show you. Uh, this just came out, and they're pretty expensive though, it's LED now for photography, and I have one here. And these are also very close to the daylight color temperature. The reason I like them, not only that, is they don't give up any heat and they use very little electricity. As a matter of fact, this one runs on, as you can see, AA batteries, and, but they're expensive. And they do come with filters for color correction, as I mentioned, uh, plain filters, and one for tugs and lighting and one for fluorescent lighting. So, I say I'll touch on lighting and gauge more in, uh, about white balance in, in the future. That is your introduction to uh, photography uh, in uh, part one of the series. I'll touch on more in part two, but that should get you started. I'm Paul, and thank you for watching photography. Uh, actually, photograph this, actually, what we're calling it. So, photograph this, have fun with your photographs, and uh, have a great week, and uh, talk to you next week. Bye.